2011 was my year of failure. Do you recall having one of those? Like a year where so many things were going wrong and even the thought of putting yourself out there was too much to bear? Here's how mine went. I had recently moved to the United States and at the young age of six, I was struggling to adjust. I was failing at pretty much everything, failing at learning English, failing at making friends, and evidently, I was falling behind in school. I had failure constantly staring me in the eyes and telling me I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't smart like the other kids or capable, that my accent at the time, believe it or not, was incomprehensible, and that my culture was unwanted. As a child, this feeling of failure was detrimental. See, as kids, we didn't just get sad. We'd curl up in a ball and tell ourselves that no one would understand. When we got angry, we'd kick and scream injustice and curse the world. And when we were afraid, we'd fade off into the background and let opportunities pass us. And that is exactly what I did. I stayed in a comfort zone where I knew I was safe as opportunities for excellence awaited me at the border of my discomfort. Now, what is this quote unquote comfort zone I was stuck in? Cambridge Dictionary defines it as a situation in which you feel comfortable in your abilities and your detrimentations are not being tested. This is typically due to the fear of what's outside of it. The fear of failure is a natural human emotion that arises when we face the possibility of not meeting our expectations or goals. It can manifest in various forms, such as fear of embarrassment, fear of criticism, fear of disappointment, and fear of rejection. I'm gonna say these fears again, and I want you to think of what these mean to you. Fear of embarrassment, fear of criticism, fear of rejection, and fear of disappointment. These four fears can often be so powerful that it paralyzes us, preventing us from reaching our full potential. We all have dreams and aspirations, goals and ambitions that we want to accomplish, but if we keep letting these fears hold us back, we'll never reach that. I think most of us can agree that quarantine was a wake-up call. I didn't realize that these fears were really getting to me until March of 2020 when COVID hit. I think most of us here can agree that quarantine was a wake-up call, and mine came in the form of my mother. Whenever me and her were home for more than together, we'd have these morning tea chats. It mainly consisted of my mom drinking tea and me chatting, but it was like a free therapy dupe. And I remember this one particular morning as we were chatting on our first few years here, it hit me how it never occurred to me how difficult my mother's adjustment was and how far she had came. While both of us had come into this nation with many obstacles to face, my mother was now thriving. She had been taking English classes, even started a financial club at her job. And I realized that over the years, I had implemented a fixed mindset while my mother had a growth mindset. Now, what is a fixed and a growth mindset? A fixed mindset states, this is where I am, these are the things that I know I'm good at and capable of doing, so this is where I plan to stay. While my mother, on the other hand, had a growth mindset, constantly saying, how can I grow and how can I evolve? A growth mindset isn't worried about what is next, but what is final. And what I learned from my mother is that a growth mindset isn't easy. On the contrary, I believe that having a growth mindset is more painful. For example, see, as kids, some of us experience growing pains, pains that came from our attempts at growth. And as we age, that physical pain should turn into mental pain in our attempt at growth. Once I realized that I was stuck in this position, I knew I wanted to do something to change. So I did the number one thing a teenager does when looking for information. Sorry to the US Congress, but I opened TikTok and started scrolling. <laughs> and Eventually, after scrolling for three hours too long, I stumbled across a motivational video of Zig Ziglar stating the three C's of life. These three C's being making a choice plus taking a chance to create change. I'm going to tell you how I implemented these threes so you can do the same. The first C being choice is consciously deciding to make a choice to do something and break that immobilization of fear. That's taking the first step towards growth. The second C being chance is taking a chance to do something new, hopefully something that scares you. 
I thought back to 2011, my year of my self-perceived failure. And I realized that a huge part of why I thought I was failing was because of my inability to speak English. So I did the things that I thought would help me out. I joined the speech and debate club and even became a legislative page and peer. Because of the chances that I took and the choice that I made, I saw some change. Now, rem I want you guys to remember these three C's. Make a choice plus taking a chance will equal ch change. One choice plus one decision that will direct you through a path. These small steps will lead to small changes. Make that choice and take that chance and see some real change and growth in your life.